And then we've got energy density. So energy density, this refers to number of kilojoules per gram of food. So the greater kilojoules, kilojoules per gram, the greater the energy density. So um, when food is used by the body, the energy is then released, okay? So that's why we say that food is fuel. So we tend to measure food in kilojoules. We do see calories, and everyone actually knows the term calories a lot because that is the term Americans use it as we influence a lot by the American culture and we go by calories because that's what we see on TV. Um, but kilojoules is actually what we measure it here in Australia. So like I said before, one calorie is equivalent to four point, or I say 4.2 pretty much, kilojoules. Um, and so that's why you can do the conversion rate if you prefer to see it in calories. Uh, the energy density of food depends on the relative amounts of fat, carbohydrates, protein, and water. So I went through these before. Um, so obviously fat is the most energy dense. So it provides the most energy in terms of it's worth 37 kilojoules. Alcohol, it is not a nutrient. It provides 29. Protein, 17. Carbs, 16. And then water, zero. Water is still a really important nutrient, but it's required for hydration. Um, chips, soft drink, chocolate are what we call really energy dense foods. They are really low in nutrients uh, and they often what we call empty kilojoules. Uh, so people are eating them just for the pleasure of eating, but in nutrient wise, they give us very little. Um, so I've been posing a question there what nutrients do you think are the cause of this? Sugars, okay, they contain a lot of sugars in them. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick little test. Um, so I've told you how many kilojoules is in one gram of each of these macronutrients. So in a moment, you are going to press pause and try and work this out. So you need to calculate the total energy of this meal. So this meal has 16 grams of carbs, 12 grams of protein, 3 grams of fat. You need to work out what is the total energy of this meal. So think about what I spoke just before about how many kilojoules are in one gram. So you need to be times in that 16 by a certain number that I said before. The 12 grams of protein by how, how many kilojoules in one gram of protein. And the 3 grams there of how many kilojoules in one gram of fat. Okay, I'll press pause and then you can tell me your answer. Okay, and we're back. So for the first one, I said there, there are 16 uh, kilojoules in one gram of carbohydrates. So that first one happened to be 16 times 16, which would be 256. And then for the protein, remember there's 17 kilojoules in one gram of protein, so it'd be 12 times 17, which is 204. And then fat is the biggest one at 37 kilojoules per one gram, so it'd be three times 37 at 111. And the total energy intake should be 571 kilojoules. So very well done if you got that out, got that right. Okay, then we're going to compare. I'm going to give you another go now. So now we know how exactly to do it. I want you to have a go at this next one doing the same method you just did before. Okay, and we're back. So five times carbohydrates, so 16 kilojoules per one gram. So five times 16, which is 80 kilojoules. For the protein, there's 17 kilojoules per one gram in protein. So 10 times 17, which is 170. Then we've got 37 kilojoules in one gram of fat, so it's 30 times 37, which would give us 1,110. And then 29 kilojoules in one gram of alcohol, so we, that gives us 58 kilojoules, a total of 1,418 kilojoules. So it is a lot more than the previous meal of 571. That's just a little comic there. That's often what my... Uh, husband would say to me, I don't really allow pasta or bread in our house. Don't you worry, that won't be the first time you hear me talk about it. People get sick of me talking in the semester about my daily food intake, but I'm sure you'll learn to love it. Okay, carbohydrates. Oops. So Carbohydrates are one of our main sources of energy. A lot of athletes would tend to go to carbohydrates for a quick burst of energy. A lot of time the simple carbohydrates, which are sugars, they're easy to consume, quick to digest, and give us that, that spurt of energy we need, say in half time in a game or just before you go out to play the sport. 
rough kind of guideline, we looked at 45 to 65 percent of our total daily intake or total energy should be coming from carbohydrates. Um, okay, I'm going to give you another little quick quiz. Given that 45 to 65 of total energy should come from carbs, calculate the following. Greg's total energy intake for the day is 8,000 kilojoules. How much of this should be provided by carbohydrates? Okay, off you go, math geniuses, work that out. Okay, so you should have got 3,600 kilojoules, okay? So um, going by, if we base on, say, 45%, we could go 8,000 times by 0 .0, 0 0.45, which would give us 3,600 should come from carbohydrates for his day. Okay, why do we need carbs? Okay, there's numerous reasons. So they provide heat and energy for daily activities. They provide dietary fibre. So they helped our digestive system. So we need fibre. So make basically to make sure we're going to the loo. Okay, so fibre is super, super important. It gets our guts moving, our body pushing through the food and making sure we're getting cleansed. Um, spare protein for use in the body. Um, so it helps building and repair of that and regulation of our protein and fat, which is to use by the body. I'm going to be going through this um, reasonably quick just because I need to get what I need uh, in terms of the PowerPoint said in the 15 minutes. So if you need to pause to write down these notes, feel free to do that. Okay, we've got three classes of carbohydrates. We've got monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. We only need to know this kind of information um, to a smaller degree. In year 12, you go into it in a lot more depth. I'm just going to touch on them reasonably lightly for today. Um, we don't need to know the chemical structures, but I've just put that in there. Okay, monosaccharides. Okay, um, so these are what we call our simple sugars. So they're sweet to taste and they are soluble in water. So glucose is one of them. Glucose is probably one of those sugars or carbohydrates you've heard of before. Um, this is our body's preferred source of fuel. This is a naturally occurring. So this is in honey, fruits and vegetables. And it can also be referred to as dextrose. So most of our carbohydrates are actually convert to glucose and these are stored in the liver and the muscles and this is what we use for a primary source of energy. Um, so this is the kind of um, nutrients or carbohydrates people want for high level sports or just for general exercise um, because they are going straight to the muscles and our body is using them in the correct manner. Okay, then we've got what we call our monosaccharides. Sorry, someone's going too far. Okay, so the under monosaccharides come our fructose and our galactose. So fructose is a fruit sugar, so it's present in many fruits. It's also how we're found naturally in honey, honey, sorry, and sweeter than table sugar. So it's a really sweet flavour. You think of having honey, how sweet it is. So a lot of products these days have a lot of fructose added to them, um, and so it is starting to take over glucose. Um, then we've got galactose, so this is formed from the digestion of lactose in milk. So milk still does have a sugar in it as well. It's a naturally occurring sugar that so gives it a kind of a sweeter taste. And then we've got our last one of disaccharides. So these are sugars made up of two monosaccharide units. They're sweet to taste, but it can vary. They are also soluble in water. So this would be sucrose. So sucrose is actually a combination of glucose and fructose. It is known as our table sugars. These come from the cane plant in Australia. They can also be come from the sugar beet, and they are found in some fruits and vegetables. Okay, so we mainly know sucrose as our table sugars, the things that we add into our cereal, adding to our cooking, our baking, all those types of things. Also coming on this is lactose. So this is a combination of glucose and galactose. So it's obtained from dairy products. Um, all milk produced by humans and animals does actually contain lactose in it. So breastfeeding mums, their breast milk has lactose. Then we've got maltose, which is glucose and glucose, two combined together. Um, they often obtain from germinating of grain crops, high in dietary fiber and found in malt sugar. 
Um, that's just showing you can pair some certain products and their sugar contents. We've got things here like sweets and um, fruits like sultans, so dry fruits, uh, chocolate bars, etc. And then going down things like wholemeal bread and cream, etc. Okay, why do we need fibre? I touched on that briefly before. If we don't have enough fibre on our diet, you would be feeling slightly constipated and bloated. You should be going to the loo for the number two at least once a day. Okay, if you're going probably looking at more than three, then you're going too much. But we want to be going at least once a day. So we want lots of green um, leafy veg and lots of fruits and um, yeah, fruits and things like that to get, and wholemeal bread, sorry, and rye, rye dark breads and brown rice to get our bowels moving and to give ourselves enough fibre. The general recommendation is 25 to 30 grams per day. Okay, and this also helps sustain a really level blood sugar um, in the body and this prevents things like type 2 diabetes. I better keep going up to 11 minutes. Um, we've got two types of fibre. We've got soluble fibre, which is um, totally digested by intestinal bacteria. This dissolves in water. And then we've got insoluble fibre, which is only partly digested. Okay, so you might want to write down those little notes as I just kind of move along. Um, I'll go through this a little bit more in depth next week because I need to explain that um, a little further. Okay, function of fiber. So it slows down our initial digestion to maximize our absorption of vitamins and minerals, uh, produces soft, bulky stools, and gives us a feeling of fullness and helps prevent constipation and then things like diverticular disease, hemorrhoids, varicose veins, etc., bowel cancer. Okay, so fiber is one of the most important nutrients. It's really good to have lots of it, um, and for obviously all these types of reasons. Um, okay, so finishing off the last couple of minutes, I'm going to give you these multiple choice questions. I want you to write down, okay, the net energy for metabolism per gram of macronutrient is. All right, I want, to, want you to read through A, B, C, or D. You can pause this because I'm running out of time, and then I want you to write down the correct answer. Okay, off you go. And pause the video. Okay, the answer is A, 16 for carbs, 37 for fat, and 17 for protein. Number two, which of the following carbs is a disaccharide? A, B, C, or D? It is C, sucrose. Okay, I've got a whole series here of short questions, okay? So I'm going to get you to press pause and have a read through and answer these seven questions. And then when you press play, I'll give you the quick answers for them all in the last minute I've got left of the recording. Okay, so answer number one is uh, stands for recommended daily intake. Number two, um, nutrient dense, doesn't it have a high... Um, so nutrient dense has a high nutrient value, so it's got lots of good things in for us, gives you lots of vitamins and minerals, and it tends to be a little bit low in kilojoules. Number three, energy dense has less nutritional value, and but it's high in calories and kilojoules. Number four is 45 to 65%. Number five, um, functions could be energy, um, it helps produce heat, helps produce the um, brain, helps assist brain function. Number six, um, fiber aids digestion. It helps produce soft, bulky stools and go to the toilet regularly. Number seven, we should be having 25 to 30 grams. And number eight, we've got soluble fiber, which is digested by bacteria, and insoluble, which is partly digested. And that's it. Okay, guys, so now what you've got to do to finish off the lesson is I want you to work on the introduction test, but use it as a bit like a worksheet. Try and fill out the answers. Um, on your own without looking at your notes. Um, if you can do that in one colour, say in red font and then in blue font or black font, fill in the answers um, from the notes you've taken. And then you need to do the other worksheet on grouping all different types of foods into the categories of fats, carbs, proteins and alcohol. Okay, hopefully that takes you the rest of the lesson. Um, if not, you can finish what you did last lesson and I'll see you all next Monday and I will actually be there and can't wait to meet you all face to face. Thanks very much guys. Bye.